Oh, it's a mark. Oh, yes! Oh, did you see that? That was awesome. I just literally got everything set up. That wall I came from behind. I got the camera set up a little bit closer today just because of visibility issues. But that wall, I just come in and crushed that rattle bait. A nice fish too. Unbelievable. You guys, I haven't got an intro done. Welcome back to Clayton Chick Outdoors. I am out today on one of my favorite bodies of water, Lake of the Prairies, chasing walleye. There is an insane first ice bite at Lake of the Prairies, uh, especially in like that, say like that first part of December till Christmas. You guys, it's insane. Like, I mean like aggressive fish like that just come in and crush the rattle bait. Are you kidding me? Like I just literally got everything set up. Look at that fish. So Lake of the Prairies has a slot limit. This thing would be well over the slot, probably about a 21, 22 incher, something like that. That was insane. Awesome. Got to get it back in quick. We'll talk a little bit more about where I am and what I'm doing today. Oh, so good. I sound like such a, one of those, the lame TV shows that we're going to talk about where we are today. That's not what I want to do at all. But yes, like I said, Lake of the Prairies, crazy walleye bite, first ice. We are going to go through uh, probably like my, like say top three to five walleye lures uh, through the ice. Obviously it can apply for open water too, but most of it is for I, these lures I like for ice fishing. So I'll go through my top five. One of them being right here, the rattle bait. I'm gonna cover more into detail later, but that's the tantrum that you've seen in a couple videos uh, earlier this season already. I have a, I'm a big fan of rattle baits and I'm beginning to be a big fan of this tantrum for sure. It's got super nice action. So that was awesome. That thing just came in from like, right from behind here. So somewhere from underneath the camera and come straight down and crushed it. Oh, that was epic. Epic. Oh, there's another one right there. Another one right there. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, that's another nice fish. I just got set up again. Like just dropped down. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come on. Come on. Look at him. Look at him. He just stares, stares at it. Bounce it right in front of his face. Give it a little jiggle. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, eat it, you. I'm going to see if I can get him to eat it out of the dirt, maybe. Pound it in that sand. Look at He likes that. He likes that a lot. He likes that a lot. Pull above him. Oh, he didn't like something there. Let's see if I can get him to swing around. Pound it on the sand. Pound it on the sand. Come on. Here he comes. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. That is a good fish. Come on. That is so crazy. Oh. <laughs> Man, I hope this is what I'm in store for today. Is some crazy action like that. That was, oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Come on. Oh, look at he noses right to it and shies off. You can learn so much from the underwater camera. A nice too, I can see the flasher, he's still in the air. Oh, he's getting more aggressive. Oh, that's a different one. That's a smaller fish. That's a, that's a different fish. That's a smaller one. For sure. That's a smaller fish than the first one that was in there. Gonna hold it really still. No. So crazy. Oh, here comes another one. Here comes another one. Here comes another one. Oh, look at him stop. Come right up, charge it and stop. Oh, oh, he's circling. He's like sizing it up. Come on. Come on. Come on, here he comes. There's two of them down there. Smaller, I'm gonna just let it sit in the sand for a sec. <laughs> Come on and eat it, you. Eat it. Oh, there he comes. Look at him get aggressive. So what What did I do to... Oh, that is a nice fish. Oh, see, that was a bad... That was a bad move. I Don't move it when they get their tail near it. Man, that was... A, I wonder what I did to stop that fish from coming in and not eating it. Because he was charging it. And I, I did something that made him stop. 
Oh, this underwater stuff is mind blowing. It's so awesome. I'm so jacked for this today. <clears throat> Here he comes. Oh, yes, yes. That fish ate it right off of the bottom. It's definitely not as big as that first one, I don't think. And not as big as that one that came in right after and circled it for a bit, but it doesn't matter right now. Catching walleyes <laughs> on the underwater camera, like, oh, that is unbelievable. Come on, baby. See, he took a swipe out of it in the sand and I ended up with it just kind of on his side. He tried to eat it head first, right? So if you line up the bait head first right there, that's where I ended up with him right there. Barbless hooks pop straight out. This would be like the perfect eater at Lake of the Prairie. It's like a 16 inch fish. Like I said, there's a slot limit. That would be a good one to keep, but I don't think I'm keeping any because I have uh, one in the fridge right now. So yes, it's going back. Took a little bit of wind today. So I'm trying to do my best to block it as much as I can. Keep the wind on my back and keep the audio clean and clear. Oh, where's the fish? Mark it on my, here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, I missed him. I missed him. Come back. Come back. Come back. I felt him. Come back. Come back, please. Give me another chance. Give me another chance. Please. There's my bait. There it is. Here he comes. Here he comes. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Oh, it's so cool watching those fish. Come in and pound that bait. Oh, he gave me two chances. I missed him on the first one. He ate it, but, or he hit it, but I don't think he ever hooked up. Oh, that was so cool. So cool. I don't think it's a very bad fish. Ooh, ooh. That's a pretty good fish. That's a, that's a really good fish. It's a really good fish. Oh, stay buttoned, stay buttoned. I'm so glad that fish came in and gave me another chance. Oh, it's wrapped in the cord or in the camera right now. As if a wall, he's like, oh, he's over here. Okay, he's free, he's free. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. That's a big fish. That's a good one. That is a good fish. Okay, girl, I got you, I got you, I got you. I'm trying to keep it pinned against the ice. Come here. <laughs> oh, yes. Look at that one right there. Lake of the Prairie's gold. Rattlebait munched. Oh, beautiful. That was a very awkward grab in the hole, but I didn't want that rattle bait in my hand, even though it is barbless. That's a beautiful fish. Like a 25, 26 incher. Awesome fish. Beautiful. Thanks, girl. Thank you for the epic eat on the underwater camera. I gotta, I gotta think about uh, how I'm gonna do this when I release these fish, because they're just spraying water all over the place. Oh, that was so cool. Absolutely epic. So, like I mentioned earlier, I'm on Lake of the Prairies. It's a, it's a border lake, meaning it's on the, the border of Saskatchewan and Manitoba. All of the Manitoba regulations though kind of fall for this body water because it is more on the Manitoba side. Uh, you have a, a slot size of um, 17 and 5 eighths, I think it is. There's a, I think it's, what does that work to? 45 centimeters, I believe. You can't keep anything over that mark which is nice right because it keeps all of the breeders back in the lake so you know you could take home a couple like 16 17 inches type of thing and the lake is full of walleye like i mean full you can come here and it's like common to have like 50 to 100 fish days it's it's pretty insane especially when you get to those prime time power hours you know, as that sun setting, it can just be one after another. I've had days here where I, I can't keep up with two rods even. I just have to put the dead stick away because you just can't keep up. But like I said, it's, it's a border lake. It's a really, really long reservoir. It's got a it's got a little river channel that kind of flows through the whole thing. And what's nice is Humminbird has uh, actually mapped the whole thing. You can put it on your unit. You can also put it on your uh, your Humminbird uh, Fish Smart app and you can have it on your phone. So when you're walking out to the spot, you know, you can kind of pick your spot you want to go to and then walk out there. But I'm just set up just off of the old river channel there uh, in one of the little like nooks and crannies that turn. Turns are always a key. Like if you can set up just like on the outside of the river channel somewhere where the fish are going to come up and feed. Sometimes during the day, you can slide into the river channel as well and probably fish it in there. But I like to set up on top here. I'm in 19 feet. The river channel's just off to the side of me. And I'm basically waiting for these fish to come up here and cruise this little flat here and have a little snack. 
it's a great it's a great body of water i i grew up fishing this when i was younger my parents have a campsite at rickers so i spend lots of time there i stay over at lowen's place at lost meadows quite frequently there too and it's uh it's wonderful if you're gonna look for a weekend to come out especially like before christmas if you can get out here all of december like you can smash them i believe lowen's got some openings there yet still for december not many he books up pretty fast but he's got three cabins there uh, his uh, information will be listed below uh, this video in the description. And then there's also like Roblin, which isn't too far away, which is also a good access there. You can stay at a, a hotel there and then you have a couple lakes there. You can fish East Goose, West Goose. You can slide over to Twin Lake for tiger trout. Really make a weekend out of it. But this early season walleye bite, early ice season, is something that you should probably experience. Like it can be, it can be insane. Oh, 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 look at that. Good fish. Good fish. Oh, what scared him? What scared him? Come back. He didn't like something. He didn't like something. Oh, he bolted. Look at, look at him. Look at him size it up. He's totally interested. Oh, 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 come back. Come back. Come back. Have a little snack. Come on. Come on. Come back. <laughs> it's crazy how sometimes they just come in and pound it and sometimes they like, they size it up, look for that opportunity. The longer that they obviously uh, analyze the bait, you know, the, the less chance you have of catching that fish. If you can get them to eat when they first come in, right, and trick them that that's actually a, a live meal, that it's real and not a, a piece of plastic, obviously, right, that's your, your best chance. But the longer they analyze the bait, it's, it's tougher to catch them. That's why sometimes it's good to even like just drop it into the sand and just like stir up all that mud because they can't get a good read on what that is. They just see something messing around in the mud, right? And all of a sudden they get a little bit of a profile and they just poof, attack it. Obviously it doesn't always work out, but it's definitely one good option to do with any type of bait, whether it's a jig and a minnow or a spoon or a rattle bait, you know, sometimes just having it down in that mud is good i have a little bit of a disadvantage right now too i'm right next to a rock like that so if that that fish isn't gonna slam its no, its snout into that rock right so when I, when I do have it into the sand i need to try to get it away from that rock a little bit and then bounce it just to give him a, a clear profile you have to think too down there that that rock if it sticks this far up right and that baits here beside it when that fish is here he can't even see over top of that rock sometimes, right? He doesn't have a clear, a clear line, a clear visibility of it. So in an ideal world, I literally would move over like say, you know, a foot, foot and a half, something like that, just to get away from that rock. Having those rocks in the area is great because it's a transitional and different structure, but being right, right below me, that's not a great thing for me. This is gold. I love, here he comes, here he comes. See, he's getting past that rock and he took a swipe at it right there. He got past the rock, turned, took a swipe at it. Now, I don't wanna hammer it right now below him. I'm gonna wait till he gets a bit away and then I'm gonna work it again. A lot of times if you start hammering it up and down when they're, they're, they're near it like that, you're gonna end up spooking them. Don't forget too, you got a fishing line straight up and down. So there's a chance too that their tail could run into it, which is also gonna spook them, right? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta pick your, your, uh, your your battles when to move it when not to move it and that fish did take a swipe at it but it completely missed it it's a lot having an underwater camera you can just have so much more information that's like available to you compared to any flasher that's out there like even even a live scope that garmin makes there's it's an awesome readout but you're still not going to get what you can see on an underwater camera right that that just right there in front of you being able to actually see exactly what's going on now i have the i have the camera exactly about 38 inches because that's the length of the rod away from my hole now when you have better visibility obviously you can back up your camera a little bit more but this is kind of where i know that spot right now i'm 1920 feet this is what i can get away with for visibility where i am some days is going to be clear some days is going to be a little bit cloudier in terms of the water clarity but you just gotta you know try it. it it never hurts and obviously also too your your peak 
times early morning or later at night you're not going to have great visibility either but during the day like it's it's pretty good you know for a reservoir lake that's uh reservoir lakes are generally not known for really good water clarity in general it's great like <laughs> and it's so much fun being able to watch these fish slam these baits like yeah it's so good what a life have i ever mentioned that i love fishing like i love fishing oh Oh, just change bait something a little bit smaller here. Another type of bait. Any, oh. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have said, look, he's coming anyway. He's coming again. He's coming again. There we go. He hardly, hardly has that hook in his mouth. I could tell by the underwater camera. He hardly has it hooked. So I'm using a different style of bait again. Smaller fish, which I kind of knew from the underwater camera. But uh, one of my top fives is a jigging spoon. I consider there to be two different styles of jigging spoons. This one, a uh, little Northland buckshot. It's like a, an on the spot uh, jigging spoon. Really small, dense. It doesn't swing out side to side. The other type of jigging spoon, which I'll go through later yet too, has a style. Um, it's a flutter spoon, which is like the dinner bell from Frostbite and the slender spoon that I've used in some videos before. It's a more of an erratic side to side action spoon that just does awesome things right just shoots out to the side shoots out to the side so there there's number three right now we're on bait bait three you got the rattle baits first one jigging a minnow and uh a jigging spoon that's more small compact dense and this one being a northland buckshot spoon the dinner bell is quite nice because you can almost use it as both if you rip it hard it'll flutter out to the sides quite nice but it's also a really good pound on the spot spoon too it's kind of like a cross but yeah, the, the box shot's definitely like a, if you notice, it's like, it's just like a straight up and down. There's no out to the sides at all. Like the rattle bait out to the side, rattle bait's out to the side, right? This, a spoon like this is like straight up and down and that's pretty much it. That's a little better fish. That's a little better fish. Here he comes, here he comes. That fish crushed it, like crushed it. That fish crushed it. He come and took a little, oh, look at him just freak out down there. Freak out. Don't, I'm not gonna horse this one too much. The last two Smith fish, even though they've been smaller, I tried to horse them up the hole quick and then I end up uh, getting them stuck on the bottom of the ice. This one's a little bit nicer fish though. A little bit nicer. Not, not like before though, but it's still nice fish. Okay, girl, come here. There we go, there we go, there we go. There we go, okay, nice fish. Ah, that one was fun because I watched it come in. Pound, look at them get all tensed up. They get angry, angry fish. I'm gonna put you back. Okay, stop flaring, it's okay. Yes, that'd be a good eater. Go. Bye. Oh, I see a mark on the flasher. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come on. I'm going to pound it. Oh, ho, ho. oh, I don't like it up against that rock. Get away from that rock. Come on. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. That gosh darn rock. It literally should, I wish I was literally like, literally just like, I don't know, a foot over. But everything's set up so nice. I don't want to move it. I don't want to move anything. I like my setup. Moving everything's like, take me an hour to move it all. If I wasn't catching fish, I'd be moving it because I'd be like in my head that that's got to be the reason for it. Here it comes, here it comes. Oh, come on. Did you see that? He just like nudged it. Ooh, that's a nice fish. I think. Hard to tell when they're close to the camera, right? Looks better though. I'm not trying to be too erratic with it. Hoping he just like takes, he turns and comes in and charges it is what I need. There we go. I just pulled, 
that one off the bottom a little bit. And when the fish turned to go up at it, it, it got him to got him to bite. Okay, okay, okay. Just wait. I'll bring you up. Wait. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, shush, 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 shush. Little guy, get him back down. Little guy. Okay. I said I'd change up baits here again. We're going to do that. I'm going to drop down the rattle bait while I tie a new bait on this rod. I really want to keep my rattle bait on for most of the day, especially as the day progresses and those fish get uh, a little bit more aggressive. I just want to keep my rattle bait on all day. So I'll pop another bait on that rod and show you guys a different bait. It's another bait right here. This is uh, a hyper rattle. This is like your jig and wrap style bait. This one's a lot smaller. It's a very, very darty lure. When you snap, it goes out to the side, out to the side. But the hyper rattle is nice because it's also really, really dense for being the size that it is. Does that make sense? It's really dense. Normally when you get a small, a bait that's that small, it's not so dense, but this one falls nice. It's very, very erratic. I got it on the bottom down there somewhere. Let's see if I can find it on the underwater camera. It's been a really, really good bait. Having that erratic side to side, there it is. Plus it also allows you to really, really move it. Just twitch it on the spot. Nice and, and slow, nice and soft type of thing. It's a very, very good bait. Here comes a fish right now, literally in the first like, here it comes. First couple seconds of dropping it down there. Small little walleye. Small, that's called a small eye. Small eye. I feel like when those fish come in, like I even wanna just pull it away from them just in case there's a bigger fish behind them or something like that. Like, no, I don't wanna catch you. Don't eat me. Don't eat me. This lure is really darty and hard to capture on the camera the whole time unless I'm just holding it still right in one spot. You can see when I snap it, it goes like whoosh, off the screen, whoosh, off the screen, whoosh, off the screen. Very, very darty lure. Good bait though, like a very, very good bait. Good bait. Oh, here we go, here we go. Got him, got him, got him. Almost lost him, almost lost him. Almost lost him. Almost lost him. Just a giant, hey? Just a giant, that's a tiny fish. There's small fish here too, but that's good. Population strong. Okay, well there's another style of, of bait. I never used it long, but uh, we're going to switch over to one more style of bait, which is uh, a flutter spoon. I'm gonna use. I think. Uh, I think I'm gonna use the slen the slender spoon right now, and then I'll probably use the rattle bait for most of the day. That's just kind of what I'm feeling. I'm gonna lay all the baits out here yet and do a little bit of a comparison to show you some different styles of each bait. But yeah, little hyper rattle, <sighs> flutter flutter spoon. A very another very erratic bait. Lots of side to side movement. Sometimes you have a tough time picking it up on your flasher until it falls back, levels itself back out to where it should be type of thing. It's gonna be really tough to pick up on the underwater camera at times, but there it is right there. Very erratic bait. I'm a big fan of uh, flutter spoons, the erratic motion side to side type of thing. I really like a gold color. You can work these things aggressive. You can really just kind of hover them and just kind of jiggle them and twitch them, twitch them on a the spot. I'm gonna tip it with a little minnow and see what happens. I bet you, sometimes, see what you can do too, instead of the minnow head, you take your full minnow and you can do like a wrap, wrap. That's what those Manitoba boys do, wrap all the time. Stick it through the treble and then they just kind of wrap it around the whole hook. So they're actually putting minnow, a little piece of minnow on every hook will wrap and that's just basically to allow you to stay on just a little bit better now right now i feel like those fish are just a little bit finicky they need some kind of bait with them right now 
the bait is going to kill most of the action on the spoon but the spoon still has lots of movement lots of flash and then you have that bait there when you want to sit it in the bottom and just let it sit there it won't do erratic side to side as much as you'll see anymore but uh sometimes that's what you have to do when they're just that they're not super aggressive right like you need them you need some bait sometimes you just need some bait Probably will seal the deal, I bet you. Yeah, look at that. Like I just, on the top corner of the screen, I just saw a fish pick it up. It feels, feels really tiny, it feels tiny. It's not that small, but yeah. See how like that was like instant? I was down there forever with no bait and I dropped it down with bait and it was like an instant eat, instant little guy. He's a little guy though, he's a little guy. Comes another one. Ooh. Come on. There we go. There we go. That one I had to hang right in front of him. Had to hang it right in front of him. Okay. There we go. There we go. There we go. See with that bait on that spoon. It definitely helped out a lot. Okay, that one was, he took down a little bit better there. I get down there with the pliers. Okay, another good eater back down. Okay, I'm gonna put, it's getting to be like prime time, it's 3.30 right now. So I'm gonna grab this camera quick here, put a bunch of uh, lures out here, go through them quick, and then we're gonna fish the power hour really hard. So here you can see a couple different baits. I talked about the rattle baits here. Some of my favorite ones are uh, the Savage Gear Fat Vibes. These are like two and a half inches. And then I've been really liking the tantrums. I'm using that color down there though, the metallic sexy shad. And then you can't go wrong with the old jig and the minnow right there. That was my second favorite, probably not my second favorite, but my top five. And then you have here the more dense spoons uh like kind of pound on the spot those are both buckshot made by northland and then you have your jigging wrap style baits that's a hyper rattle hyper rattle and that's like a jigging wrap right there and then you have lastly your flutter type spoons here these are medium-sized dinner bells i don't have any of the big ones yet that's slender spoon uh and then uh yeah another slender or another uh frostbite uh dinner bell there and this is a buckshot uh Flutter spoon, I believe it's called something like that. It's a buckshot style. So yeah, anyways, that's like my top five must have walleye baits through the ice. I'll probably finish off this day mostly with the rattle bait, a little bit with the jigging spoon. I'm gonna fish rather aggressive because I just want like one big fish yet, you know, one giant one to come through and have them slurp it up. So it's, it's a good, it's a good day. It's a fun day today. I feel like I have so much footage today. Like, is <laughs> is a 40 minute video too long? Like, is this does this get boring after a while? Or is it so good with like just all the underwater stuff? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Like, I have so much footage today of all these fish. It's gonna be hard to choose what to edit out and what to keep. Oh, fins raised. Oh, it comes a little guy. Ah, smaller guy. Had two fish in there and the smaller one of the two come and ate it. Not that the other one was much bigger, but he's still down there. We'll see if I can get back to him quick. Get back to him quick. Little guy, love the prime times. Power hour, it's not even power hour yet. It's gonna get stupid, I can just feel it. I can just feel it. It's gonna be lights out up here. Come another one. Got him. Small guy. Yeah, like this is gonna get just crazy. He just spit up a little minnow. Oh, there's a fish right there. Good one. Oh, good fish. Good fish. Come back. Turn around, come back. That's a good one. That's a good one. Come back. Here he comes. Come on. Come on. Yes, that's a good one. That fish looked good. It's, oh, I dropped him. He hardly ate it and I dropped him. 
Oh, that one looks good. Oh man, that's too bad. That's too bad. I had that fish eat on the underwater camera. I'm losing light slowly on that, so I don't know how much longer I'm gonna get good footage on the underwater camera. Oh man. That's too bad. I got him to eat though. But I dropped him. Oh, oh, there we go. That's a decent fish. That thing came out right from the side. Never even gave me much notice. All of a sudden it just come in and eat. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, don't Clayton. I'm losing six pound test. Go easy. Go easy. Go easy. That was insane. Look at that. Rattle bait inhaled, like inhaled, gone. That fish never even gave me like a chance to get ready for it. It just come up and pounded me. Awesome fish. Those are the moments that I love. I live for those. Oh, here comes another one. Chart. This one's good too. Oh, yes. No. He got stung somehow, but didn't hook up. That's a big one. Oh, are you kidding me? How did that not hook up? Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, that will wrap up this video. The night bite, you know what? It just did not happen for me. I stopped marking fish for probably a good 15, 20 minutes already. And yeah, it just didn't happen. I'm sure if I sat here all night, I could probably plug one or two more fish, but it's been a great, great day. The, the objective was to come here and play around with the underwater camera, which I made happen. So it was awesome. You guys, there's lots of time this season yet to experience this Lake of the Prairies walleye bite. And, and don't get me wrong, I keep saying in the video that it's like up to like Christmas. You can still come here later and you can find fish. The, the action might not just be as hot and heavy. Now, keep in mind, I've had some of my best days back in the day when I used to put the ice castle on here in February. I remember catching fish all night till like one, two, three o'clock in the morning, which was pretty fun. I'd have a hundred fish days, lot, lots of smaller stuff, lots of eaters and I catch, I think the biggest one I ever caught in the ice castle was 27 and a half inches here. I've caught some bigger fish here, but yeah. Anyways, I'm rambling you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you uh, haven't been subscribed yet, subscribe and hit the like uh, on this video too. The more we can like these videos, probably the better it will be for YouTube pushing my content going forward. So thanks for watching. Don't forget, get outside.